there are physicists who work with soldering irons and chipboards and stuff like that. Your chalk on a blackboard, yeah. presumably. Yeah. They, uh, do you have a particularly favourite chalk, by the way? Yes. Uh, uh, I knew there was going to be a yes. I knew that was going to be It wasn't a stupid question. You're thinking, Dara, that's a stupid <laughs> question. But they don't. They all have a favourite chalk. Is it the Japanese chalk? <laughs> it, ha it has to be soft, but not too soft. And the, ki <laughs> and the kind of the blackboard has to be uh, black, not white. Of course, of course. I don't understand what... No, dry whiteboards are ridiculous. How come people, people can write... There, imagine, there's even a green blackboard. <laughs> <laughs> but properly, because it is almost as if it's a... It, this is how it has to be done. Yeah. Chalk on a blackboard it is, is how it's done. But there is a, there's a Japanese company who made I, particularly... Uh, I cannot... Uh, I, uh, forbidden from private companies' advertisements. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. Uh, I, I work most of my time on a sofa. Right. Uh, lying down with my feet up, writing... On, and, and then I regularly walk up and go to the blackboard and write on the blackboard. And then I... That's, this is my tool. I don't like to stay sit. I only stay sit when, like talking to you. So either standing in front of the blackboard online or talking with people, but also standing on, online. Absolutely. It's the only way to, it's the only way to work. Uh, it's absolutely glorious. It's the, uh, and the, in your data, we'll obviously we'll move on to this. In, in what you've been working in your career, you work at the junction yeah. of the two great theories yeah. of 20th century physics. Yeah. So let's briefly, for those who just follow this thing, whatever there is, we have relativity, Originally 1905 for special relativity, 1915 for the general exactly. relativity. Einstein wrote down the initial... Exactly. Initial Fantastic success. Huge success, yeah. Proval works on massive, huge scales. Yeah. Changed our view of how... Space and space time, works. yeah. Yeah. The, uh, exactly. Essentially, the, uh, so described to us that how gravity works is it twists space and to create the paths that... And, and it distorts time. And it's a sort of different speed depending on where you are, how you move, and so on. Now, next to that, then, quantum mechanics. Right. What's your two lines sum up of quantum mechanics? Another infinite success. Yep. Uh, wonderful. We do all sorts of technology with, and we don't yet understand exactly what we're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> Things appear. Unless, in, yeah. General relativity, right? General relativity, we do understand very well what yep. we're talking about. It's clean. Quantum mechanics is super effective. Never everything that it um, has uh, predicted, it's come out right. And then, you know, the last Nobel Prize was about quantum mechanics because the guys did some experiment and found out exactly what my book in the seventies said they should find out. So, uh, so quantum mechanics is totally successful, uh, but it's, it's not clear. Uh, how the wave function, the particle, the probabilities, the discreteness, uh, it doesn't give us a clean, um, clean story to tell. That's why my book on quantum mechanics is far more confused and complicated than, than the others, because we don't have a clear idea. This is Helgoland? Yeah. Helgoland, yeah, okay. The, the, um, so you have a junction with these two. Yeah. Relativity, which deals the vast, yeah. and the gravitational pull of, of, across enormous scales. Yeah. Quantum about the existence or non-existence or situation or non-situation or energy or non-energy of particles at the absolute smallest scale. Exactly. Yeah. Now, those two things have been the great how to relate those two things. And loop quantum is, the, is one of the competing theories, is probably the best way to put it, wouldn't it? Correct. Yeah. To draw those together. Yeah. If you ask me, it's the best of the competing theories. Of course. If you ask somebody else, it's not necessarily. Not, it's not super strings that we've heard about so for us. So it's an alternative, yes. It's an alternative, that like, yeah. That's right. So that battle will carry on, like whatever. Is there a two line way of, of explaining what loop quantum gravity yes. is? Yes, yes. It's not, I, I don't think it's the. the uh, I would in this way. First, um, the problem is exactly the one you have discussed. So namely, uh, we found out quantum mechanics, we found out general relativity, the two don't match. And the problem is not just an abstract problem, theoretical problem. It's the fact that there are situations in the universe where uh, gravity is relativistic, described by, by general relativity, and we expect quantum mechanical effects to come in. So we, we cannot do calculation there. So it's, it's a... It's a it's a concrete situation. One of these is the interior of the black holes. We're, we're going to talk to that. We're going to get to that. Uh, another one is the universe, for instance, what happened 13, 14 billion years ago. 
Uh, so there are situations in the universe which definitely we need to use quantum theory and general relativity together, and so we need a theory where we combine the two. Just a parenthesis, this is not the same of finding the theory of everything, the unified theory of everything. This is not the same of writing an equation that encompasses everything. It's just finding the quantum properties of gravity, the quantum properties of space-time, okay? It doesn't mean that uh, we write an equation in which there are electrons, photons, uh, uh, quarks, uh, gravity, electromagnetic force in the single equation. That's a unification problem. But the unification problem is different than quantum gravity, putting quantum gravity together. So you asked me a, a, a two-line version of, um, of loop quantum gravity. It's theory that does that. It's a quantum theory of gravity that reduces to usual generativity in, in when you disregard it, its quantum part, and you take h bar to zero, <laughs> as physicists say. So it's a, it's a page of equations, the less it's three lines of equations. And if you compute with it, what you find out, and this characteristic is the main characteristic of the theory, that space-time is quantized. So is, is quantized in the sense is granular. Okay, so there is, there is a That's smallest amount. That's the main, uh, yeah. yeah. So if you take this space here, you cut in half, you cut in half, you cut in half, you cannot go forever. At some point, there's a smallest scale. And this is a very characteristic quantum phenomenon, right? A, the, the light that is um, flowing on us is actually, we know that with quantum mechanics, come in little chunks, which are the photons. It's granular. This light that comes in, it's many, many little grains. We see it as a, as a unique flowing thing because there are many of them, in a sense. So this granularity of light it's a typical quantum phenomenon. Quantum phenomena is, uh, give the, mi the minuscule granularity of things. And if we apply it to gravity, which is meant to apply it to space, what we find out from the equations is that space itself, it's granular. So you cannot, it's not continuous. This idea that you can, at school we were talked that space is continuous, so in principle you can divide as many times as you want, there's always space. Uh, well, that's wrong. That's many things that te people teach us at school. It's not true. Sp physical space is, uh, unlike mathematical space, it's made by gra grains. That's the first um, main uh, uh, prediction of the theory. And then the theory gives the question uh, of how these grains jump around and make space 